Hello students. Today we are here to learn another one new chapter of 10th standard that is human eye and colorful world. Related to this, you didn't have learned anything in the previous classes, particularly in the 8th and the 9th. And uh, this year they have introduced you that is about the human eye, how is going to be performed the function and uh, related to the some of the spectacular phenomena which are being observed in the nature. So first of all, we learn about the human eye. Human eye is one of the optical organ which is enable us to see and uh, it take the images from the surrounding and it give one of the beautiful concept for the human. And before going to the internal study of the human eye, let's study first the external part or also we can term them as the accessory parts of the eye. We have five accessory parts of the eye. Namely, there is eyebrow, eyelashes, eyelid, lacrima and lacrima and conjunctiva. So first of all, we will go through the eye. Eyebrow is one of the accessory part. It provides the shade during the bright sunlight. And even it protects our eyeball from the dust which is falling from the above. Next, let's move on to the eyelashes. You can able to see into your eyeball there are in the eyelids in the eyelid, there are the small hairs that have been attached. That small hairs we call them as eyelashes. Even they are performing the protective function, that is, they are protecting the eyeball from the dust particle. Whereas the eyelids, these eyelids are helpful to open and close our eyeball. And uh, let's move on to the next one. We have the lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland, its main function is to secrete the lacrima. Commonly, we will say that one has, there is a tears. This lacrima, it helpful to wash our eyeball. We'll work out throughout the day with our eyeball and uh, it is exposed to the nature due to which lot of dust particle is going to be deposited inside our eye. And this dust particle have to be get washed out and it will be get washed out by the tears which is secreted by the lacrimal gland. And finally, we have the fifth and the last accessory part of the eyeball that is a conjunctiva. This conjunctiva is the outermost protective layer of the eyeball. Its main function is to protect the eyeball from the external atmosphere. Okay, let's move on to the internal parts of the eye. As you are observing, the structure of the human eye, the eyeball it is not perfectly spherical and its diameter is about 2.3 centimeter. Okay, then the human eye is like a camera and uh, you are all use the camera. Nowadays we have the camera in our mobile phone also. We will measure the capacity of that lens in the terms of the pixels. Whereas our human eye has a capacity of 576 pixels. So we will consider that human eye is act like a camera. It is a lens system forms an image in light sensitive screen called as a retina. Inside our eyeball we have one of the light sensitive layer and that light sensitive layer we call that one as retina. retina. And this retina consisting of mainly two types of photoreceptor cells. And the two photoreceptor cells are namely rods and the holes. And the, these rods are sensitive to the this rods are sensitive to the dim light. They are sensitive to the dim light and that they are not helpful to identify the color. Whereas the cones are sensitive to the bright light and they are helpful to identify the color. So, both of them, they convert the light signal into the chemical signal and this chemical signal later on get converted into the electrical signal and this electrical signal 
with the help of the optic nerve with the help of the optic nerve it is transmitted to your cerebrum where the image is get interpreted okay so this is a light sensitive layer of our eyeball called as retina and it will be also be termed as yellow spot okay let's move on the eyeball is almost spherical in shape with the diameter of 2.3 cm and its size should be maintained constant if the size get varied if it is get increase or if it is get decrease of you are going to suffer from the certain defects i'll explain you later on and the light enters the eye through a transparent membrane called as a cornea okay in the eyeball we have one of the transparent membrane and the, the transparent membrane we call that one as cornea and most of the light will get refracted through the cornea and it is a transparent bulge portion in front of your eyeball okay behind the cornea there is one of the muscular layer and that muscular layer we call that one as a iris and this iris it is richly supplied with the blood vessel you can even to see in the human eye we have a color some of them they have the black brown blue there is a different variety and this different variety is due to the this iris layer because this iris is richly supplied with blood vessel and it has a some pigmentation it has a some of the pigmentation because of the pigmentation we can able to observe the variation in the color of the eye which has a opening this iris has a opening called as pupil and uh, i can say that pupil is a window of the eye by means of which light can enter through the eye ball and the size of the pupil will be get adjusted with the help of the eye lens the pupil control the amount of the light enter to the eye and the eye lens is helpful to focus the image of the object on the retina and the pupil is play very important role in the functioning of the human eye pupil by its contraction and relaxation by contraction and relaxation it is helpful to adjust the image in our eye for example if the pupil get relax if the pupil get relax the eye lens become thin the eye lens become thin focal length of the lens will be get increases by means of which we can able to see the far object in the same manner if the pupil get contract the eye lens become thick focal length will be get decreases and it is unable to see the near object did you got it so this is how the pupil play in a very important role to identify the object both nearby and even the far objects so they may be can ask in the exam explain the function of the pupil so you have to explain when it will be get contract what happen when it will be get relax what happen you have to elaborate this terms and this expansion and the contraction of the lens i say the lens become thin and thick focal length will be get increase or it may be get decrease it will be done with the help of this cilia muscles and in our human eye we have the convex lens and this convex lens it converts a ray of light and by means of the converging it form a bright and a sharp bright in a sharp real inverted image upon the retina okay then even let's move on to the working of the eye the eye lens forms a real and a inverted image of the object on the retina because the retina is one of the photosensitive layer of our eye ball the light sensitive cells in the retina they produce an electrical signal which carried by the optic nerve to the brain and the brain processes the information and sends to the message to the eye then we see the object this is how the phenomena is lagging behind how we can able to identify the object let's move on to the next concept that is power of accommodation before going to discuss the power of accommodation we have one of the term that term we call 
as persistence of vision. Persistence of vision means the time at which our eye will take to persist the image in our eye, that time we call it as a persistence of vision. And it will be 1 by 10th of a second. You know, for one second, if we divide it into the 10th part, how much that small time interval we have, that much time the eyeball will take to persist the image, we call that one as a persistence of a vision. Okay, let's move on to the power of accommodation. The ability of the eye lens to see the both near and the distant object by adjusting the focal length it is called as power of accommodation. As we have gone through, in the heredity evolution we have come across that the human eye is a, one of the advanced eyeball throughout the earth. Because when compared to the evolutionary term, human eye is evolved more than that of the other organs. Because of this reason only, it can adjust itself for the both near and far object. Eye lens is composed of a fibrous jelly material. The lens is made up of a fibrous jelly material and its curvature can be changed to some extent by the ciliary muscles. Already have explained you that is the ciliary muscle they are helpful to adjust the curvature of the lens. By the contraction and by the relaxation they will adjust the curvature. The change in the curvature of the eye lens can be changed its focal length and when the muscles are relaxed the lens become thin and the focal length will be get increased and when the focal length will be get increases, we can able to observe far object. In the same manner, when the muscle get contract, the lens become thick and the focal length will be get decreases and we can able to see the near, near object. Okay? But as for the human eye, we have a limitation of the vision. And the two limitations are one is a near point and the other one is a far point. The minimum distance at which the eye can be seen object clearly without any aid. Aid means here without any support we can see the object very clearly. That distance we call it as a near point or the least distance of street vision. For a normal eye its value will be the 25 cm. If the object is there beyond the 25 cm we can't be able to observe it because our eye has been adjusted for the near point vision is 25 centimeter. In the same manner, we have a far point. The farthest distance up to which the eye can be seen the object clearly is called as a far point of the eye. And for the normal eye, it is between the 25 centimeter to the infinity. The maximum distance or the farthest distance the human eye can observe, that distance we call it as a infinity. The distance we call it as far point, and its value is infinity. Mm -hmm. Did you got it? Whereas, as I told you, if any changes happen in the eyeball, particularly related to increase or decrease in the size of the eyeball, as I have told, the diameter of the eyeball should be the 2.3 centimeter. It is get very we are going to suffer certain defects. In the same manner, if the uh, there is a curvature or the focal length if it is get altered off we are going to suffer from the certain disorder. So in this chapter they are going to discuss about the certain defects of the eye and the how to correct them. But well, one of the defects is a cataract. Cataract it is a disease in which the eyeball become opaque due to the formation of cataract layer in front of the pupil. And it's commonly observed in the old age person, but it can be corrected by using the surgical method that is will carry out the cataract surgery. Next uh, defect is a myopia or nearsightedness. It's a defect of the vision in which the person can see the near object clearly, but he cannot see the distant object because of image is formed in front of the retina. Already have explained you that image should be formed upon the retina. But in the case of the myopia, 
image is going to be get formed in, in front, front of, of the retina. retina. What is the reason the image is going to be get formed in front of the retina? There are the two reasons we have. One is increase in the curvature of the eyeballs. And the second reason is increase in the length of eyeball. As I told, the diameter should be maintained 2.3 cm. But here, the diameter of the eyeball is going to get increase of then its normal value because of that only this defect is going to get arise. But it can be corrected. It can be corrected by using suitable concave lens of minus power. And then we can ask you in exam a key reason question. What is the reason to use a concave lens for the correction of the mind? The reason it is because this concave lens is going to diverse the ray of light. As it diverse the ray of light, image is going to be get formed upon now the retina. Now this defect can be corrected by using the concave lens. Did you got it? So remember. Myopia is a disease in which the person can see near object clearly, but far object appear to be blurred. Yeah. And the reason for it is increase in the curvature of the lens and the increase in the length of the eyeball. And it can be corrected by concave lens of minus power. And why we use the concave lens? Because it never Okay, now let's move on to the Second effect, that is hypermetropia or the far sightedness. It is a defect of the human eye in which the person can see the distant object clearly. That is far object will be appear to be clear, clear but near object appear to be blurred. That is, it is an opposite of the mind. And the reason it is because of decrease in the curvature of the eyelids. In exam, maybe we can ask you, write the difference between the myopia and the hypermetropia. So you have to quote the defect and the reason and the correction. So here the reason for the hypermetropia is, it is because of decrease in the curvature of the eyelids and decrease in the length of eyeball. There, increase in the size of the eyeball. Here, decrease in the size of the eyeball. And because of that increase, the decrease in the size of the eyeball and the decrease in the curvature of the lens, the image is going to be get formed behind the retina. There, the image is going to be get formed in front of the retina, but here, the image is going to be get formed behind the retina. And uh, this defect can be corrected by using suitable power, that is, particularly positive power of which lens? Convex lens. Because convex lens converts the ray of light. As it converts the ray of light, once again the image is going to be formed upon the retina and the defect can be corrected. Okay? So remember, hypermetropia is a disease in which person can see distant object, distant object clearly, but near object appear to be blurred. Yeah. And the reason for it is decrease in the curvature and decrease in the size of a wall. And it can be corrected by using convex lens of power. Finally, we have last disorder that is presbyopia. It is a defect of vision, particularly in the old people in which they are not able to see the near object clearly due to increase in the distance of the near point. So, normally our eyeball is adjusted for the near point vision is a 25 centimeter. Because of increase in the near point, they can't able to see the near object. This is due to the weakening of the ciliary muscle. Already I have explained you the function of the ciliary muscle. Due to the weakening of the ciliary muscle, this defect is going to get arised in the old people. And decrease in the flexibility of the islands, and it can be corrected by using suitable convex lens. Sometimes this defect are not able to see the both near and far object, that is distant object clearly, and it can be corrected by using 
a bifocal lens. And a bifocal lens is consisting of convex in and the concave. But whereas the upper part of the bifocal lens should consist of concave for the correction of the far point, and the lower part should be consisting of convex lens for the correction of near vision. So remember, this presbyopia it is also be termed as old age hypermetropia. It is also be termed as an old age hypermetropia and uh, for the correction of the presmyopia we will use a, a bifocal, bifocal lens and the bifocal lens consisting of both convex and a concave lens and the upper part of the lens consists of concave and lower part should consist of convex, convex lens. Okay.